everybody. Rapture's delight here. So this video is going to be about the history of God's presence on the tabernacle and the temples and how I do not believe there will be an abomination of desolation that takes place in a third physical temple. Even though that's what's called a standard end times view that's been popular in the most current and recent years. But let's take a look at the history and why I believe what I do. So we're looking at here the tabernacle that was in the desert, the one that uh, God commanded Moses to make. And while they were in the desert, we know that the presence of God was a cloud of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night. And this pillar uh, would, would fall and descend and it would stay over the tabernacle or the tent of meeting. And so this is how the people of Israel knew that God was with them. Now, as soon as uh, Solomon finished making the physical temple that King David had got all the supplies for, Solomon finished it. We read here, check this out. Since their days with Moses at Mount Sinai, the ark had been on the move. Now it was brought into a permanent structure in the temple. Once it came to rest in the most holy place, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. 1 Kings 8, 11. God's presence fills the temple. So you could read in other places that during, the, during this time of the first temple, it was said that only the high priest could see the glory of God that dwelt above the mercy seat or the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holy Places. So the glory of God went from the tabernacle and being open for all of Israel to see to being um, closed off and only the high priest could see it. And he could only see it one day a year on the Day of Atonement when he would enter in and sprinkle it with, uh, with blood. What happened with the second temple? There was a second temple that was built many years later and there was no mention of glory filling that temple. And you will see why. And it's here in Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel 10 describes this as a kind of reversal of 1 Kings 1 that we just mentioned. Instead of the temple being prepared for God's arrival, coals are scattered as a sign of destruction before God's departure. Then the glory of the Lord leaves. The temple is no longer filled with God's glory. The people no longer enjoy God's presence. So Ezekiel was a exile prophet who lived during the time of the Babylonian exile, which would also be the time the first temple was destroyed. So when they built the second temple, even though God was pleased that it was built, there's no mention of God's so-called glory returning to the temple. Now we come to the second temple in the time of Jesus Christ. This is the second temple and the one that Herod uh made even bigger and built the temple grounds even more for 40 years before Jesus came. So Jesus dies, is resurrected, but during his death on the cross, there was a great earthquake and the veil in the temple was torn. The veil was also a picture of death, whereby we enter the presence of God. Scripture says when Jesus died, the veil was torn from top to bottom. Now this is what Jesus Christ prophesied in Matthew. In Matthew 23, he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left unto you desolate. So this is one of the final desolations of the temple. Why was it left desolate? First, we see God's glory leaving the temple in Ezekiel, and then we see his purpose and his pleasure leaving the temple with the death of Jesus Christ. There was no longer a purpose to keeping the Jewish law because Jesus Christ had died and rose again and brought a new covenant, not a covenant of law and death, but a covenant of spirit and life. And there was no longer any pleasure God would take in the sacrifice of animals for the forgiveness of sin. There was no longer pleasure or God's purpose in the temple. And finally, we see the ultimate desolation, which came 40 years later in 70 AD. By 70 AD, the Romans had breached the final defenses and massacred much of the remaining population. They also destroyed the second temple. 
So no longer was God's glory in the temple. No longer was his purpose in the temple. So keeping the law of sacrifice, the sacrificial law, was not God's purpose anymore. And no longer was there any pleasure in the temple because he tore the veil from top to bottom and finally allowed it to be destroyed in 70 AD, showing that he no longer had any pleasure in it. Now we come to the third temple, which is the uh, what people would call the tribulation temple, right? Where the so-called abomination of desolation takes place. But I would like to posit to you, I would like to suggest to you that as we now understand that his glory will no longer be in a physical temple because his spirit and his glory dwell within us. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So his spirit will no longer dwell in a physical temple. His purpose is no longer in a physical temple, meaning there is no keeping of the law. There's no forgiveness of sins. There's no atonement in a temple. All of those things are in Jesus Christ. And because of that, his pleasure is no longer in a physical temple. Jesus Christ said, because you do not receive me, your house or your temple is left desolate. So if the Jewish people rebuild a third physical temple, God's spirit will not be in it. His purpose will not be in it. And his pleasure will not be with it. So it is impossible for an abomination to take place at a third physical temple or for desolation to take place because a third physical temple is already an abomination to God and it's already a desolation because it does not have God's spirit, his glory, his purpose, or his pleasure. However, if we are looking at a symbolic representation in the abomination of desolation, then we need to look to something that happens within the human body and the human soul. So this is just one of the reasons why I think we need to look at a lot of things in a more symbolic viewpoint and move past the current modern <laughs> so-called so standard view of the end times. So God bless you and keep you. And may he cause his face to shine upon you. Bye-bye.